Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to what I think is the coolest .NET 10 feature announced, at least to date, which will allow you to do some really, really cool stuff, especially if you're an API or web developer in .NET, this applies to you. And ultimately what you'll be able to have at the end of this video is this. You'll be able to have some sort of client, like in this case a web client, where you can stream events from the server to the client unidirectionally, so only from the server to the client, not back, using an HTTP GET request, not signal R, no webhooks, just like that. So if you have any stock tickers, if you have any live orders like this, anything like that that goes from a server to a client in real time, you'll be able to use. So let's see how we can build that. What I have here is a simple minimal API, nothing special, but we are in .NET 10. And here I'm going to say map get a live orders endpoint. Now this is just a normal get HTTP endpoint. There's no fancy stuff happening behind the scenes, but what is fancy is the thing I'm going to be returning. I'm going to be returning typed results of server sent events. That's the feature SSC server sent events. This method accepts an async enumerable of a certain type, strings, if you want to have strings, a T type parameter, or what we're going to be using, an SSC item that contains a generic T type parameter. So you can return anything, integer strings, whatever, any complex object you can return and serialize. Now I will introduce a cancellation token here because we want those events to be cancelable, especially when they're basically streamed through a request. And I'm going to start this by creating an async, iAsync enumerable of SSC item of type food order. And the, the object is here. I have a generator and then just a name and a price just to show you what's going on here. And I'm going to say while this the cancellation token is not cancellation requested, then I can go ahead and generate some fake food orders. First, I'm going to add just a delay to show that there's something happening on the server behind the scenes. And then I'm going to yield return a new SSC item of type food order. And you can pass down extra stuff as well. You can pass down the data, which we will be passing. That is the food order object and event ID, as well as a reconnection interval for this connection. So I'm going to say time span from minutes or yeah, from minutes and say just one minute. Now to return the actual object, you can actually use the constructor of this object. So we're going to say here food gen or order gen dot create order. And that is it. Now we just take that get orders and we pass it here. So let's go ahead and pass a cancellation token. And that is it. Now you have what you saw on that first clip. But let me just run the API to show you how this works from the console. So I'm going to just go to the console over here and I'm going to just curl that live orders request. So I'm going to click that. And what you're going to see is, well, this is the a PowerShell version of curl. So let's go into Git Bash. So if I do the same on Git Bash, what you're going to see is we have now these streamed events with the data and the retry from the server to the client. Now, this is not a great approach because we actually don't give a name to the type of event we're passing down. We want to be able to identify them. For that, I'm going to use an extra parameter here. And I'm going to say that the event type is actually an order. And by doing that and just hot reloading and I go back to the terminal, you're going to see now that we have event order, which allows us to differentiate on the client to listen or not listen and consume those events. So I'm going to just stop this real quick. And then I'm going to go on a web page and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to just run this and I'm going to click on this and go on a website. Here we go. And now you're going to see here as well, these orders show up even on a browser one after the other. You probably wouldn't consume them like this on the dedicated page, but technically you can. So I'm going to just close that and stop that. And that now allows you to stream those events. So all that is fine for the console or if you use it on a server to server communication. So one server is a server, the other represents the client. You can have that connection if you want to. But what do you aspire to have this on a web UI? Aspire. Oh, we just launched a .NET Aspire course on Dome Train, guiding you through everything there is to know currently on .NET Aspire, from testing, eventing as well, running Aspire projects or converting existing projects into Aspire projects. There's so much to learn, and we are extending our birthday discount for this week as well. So use birthday to uh, check out to get 40% on that course and anything else, link in the description. But yes, if you aspire to go 
on a web UI and use that, what would you do? Well, here I have a Rager Pages application and I have this index page. The great thing about this feature is that browsers support it. So it's actually a thing. It's an event source that you can actually consume and then do something about it. So all you have to do is go on your page where you want to have the scripts like I have here. And then the first thing you need is you need to have an event source that listens to that thing, those live orders. So that will initiate that request and that connection. Then you, of course, want to have somewhere to put those events you're going to consume. So I have this unordered list over here. And then you have a few methods on the event source that you can listen to. You have on message, you have on error, you have on text, I think. You have a few of them. We're going to just add an event listener on that order. And we're going to say we want to listen for the type of event order. So this thing will actually match whatever is here. So it will only filter and listen for those events, nothing else. And then we take the event and then we pass the JSON of the data and then we use it over here and we say, hey, new order, take the name, take the price and then put it appended here on the child of that unordered list. And then you can also say that on error, which is another method you're going to have, take that error and put it in the console because something happened, connection failed or processing fail or anything that can fail because that connection can be persistent and will be reconnected as well if for some reason it gets dropped off. So with all that, if I go ahead and I run my API and then I go ahead and I run my web UI, then as you can see, once I land, I'm going to start getting those events. If I go into the console over here and I refresh, you're going to see this live order request, but you also have this event stream, which is the stream of the events that you're getting back. The time you're getting those events, let me just increase this. You have the data coming back and you can see them as individual values. You can also have an event ID, of course, which is we didn't provide, but you can provide if it's meaningful for your client. Maybe you want to use it for right importance or any other reasons. Then you have the type of the event and then you have the data that can be anything. So it's very intuitive. It can be used with your browsers. It's excellent as a feature and it's just natively supported. So whatever client you might have, whether that is a console application, whether that's with a browser, whether that is another server that acts as a client, you can use this feature and have unidirectional events from one to another with this consistent stream of things happening. Excellent feature, amazing feature, can be used in so many things, especially some of those that you might have signal R or WebSockets without actually needing the bi-directionality that those can have because webhooks and signal R, they can push as well as be notified on something. But this is just one side to the other. So for those use cases, I think that is excellent. Check out .NET 10. Of course, the code for this video is in the description down below. Check it out. And now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And have you been using something like this? Maybe you can replace some web socket to signal R with this. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.